I don't know what to do about this watch. It leaves me angry and confused. <laughs> Hello everyone, this is Just Watch. I am Mike and we are here to talk today about this Glycine Combat Classic 36 millimeter military and field watch. If you guys like our content, please do remember to hit subscribe, hit the bell notification so when I release a new episode, you know about it and you guys know what to do. Anyways, wrist check before we get into it. I am wearing my Seiko 6309 Turtle Vintage. I've had this one since the mid 1980s, brand new. I purchased it. I'm talking like Yoda now. <laughs> Anyways, if you guys want to know more about the Seiko 6309, I've posted a couple of episodes about it. Go through my Seiko playlist and you will see it. So let's get into the specs on this watch and why it leaves me angry and confused. First off, the specs, really good specs. It is a 316L stainless steel case, really nicely sized at 36 millimeters. That's measuring from the nine to the three across, excluding the crown and crown guards. 49 millimeters from tip to tip, 10.6 millimeters thick, and only 20 millimeter lug width. I really like the size of this watch on my 170 millimeter wrist. I think it looks great on, and it has a fairly large appearing dial, which we'll get into in a second. Before we do that, let's talk a little bit about the case itself. We have pointy crown guards, or somewhat pointy crown guards, protecting that push-pull signed glycine crown. It has a nice combination of polished and brushed finish with a really nice kind of vintage looking bevel that runs along the flank of the lug. I really like the look of the case overall. It also has a really thin domed bezel that gives the dial a fairly large appearance. So that's part of what I think makes the watch look a little bit bigger on your wrist than a typical 36 millimeter watch does. When I hold it next to my Hamilton Field khaki, the dial on this actually looks bigger than the dial on the 38 millimeter case to Hamilton Field khaki. So it's pretty interesting as far as that goes. The crown itself operates really nice and positively. It's a little bit on the stiff side popping it out, which is good and has a nice positive feel when you're setting both the date and the time. The dial is one of the first things that kind of leaves me angry and confused in that it's supposed to be a field watch, but the luminous application is almost non-existent. Basically, the watch has no glow. So that's a big problem for me for a military field watch. It should you know, have really good all-night glow. And what's interesting is that it's C1 Super Luminova, which is typically a really good luminous material. I think what the issue is that the index markers are screened on and it's screened on fairly thin. So there's just not enough depth for it to really catch the light and to hold it. As far as the index markers themselves, they're exclamation point all the way around, excepting for the calendar at the three o'clock position. It's a nicely framed window with a contrasting white day disc underneath. You have a minute track going around the perimeter as well. That actually reminds me a lot of a vintage Rolex Datejust. Kind of has a nice look to it overall. I really like the minute track. And it also has a handset that is also somewhat reminiscent of a classic Rolex Datejust. They are a little bit thinner than what you would see on a Datejust though. They do have applied luminous material and they do glow a little bit better than the index markers do. So at least you have a little bit of light coming off of the handset. Not super bright though, so that is a bit of an issue with the watch if it is supposed to be a military and field watch. Good stuff with the movement here. We have an ETA 2824-225 Joule automatic movement from Switzerland. It is a 28,800 vibration per hour or four hertz, and it features a signed glycine rotor. It of course has hand wind and hack. Good thing about the 2824, it is just so readily available on the market. There's so many of them out there that any watchmaker worth of salt is going to be able to fix it or adjust it. So if you get a watch that's running fast and it has a 2824 movement, just bring it to your local watchmaker. They're gonna be able to calibrate it and really fine tune it well for you. So no issues there with the movement. Good stuff actually, especially considering the price point, but we'll get into that at the wrap up. The bracelet on this watch really kind of confuses me. Actually, that probably confuses me more than the watch itself does. From a distance, it looks somewhat like a Rolex Jubilee. It is a five link stainless bracelet, nicely finished throughout, no issues there. Everything's chamfered and scalloped, everything that you want has a nice little bit of taper, solid end links, nice brushed and polished finish. What's weird about it is it has a dual deployment clasp, which to me says more dress watch than anything. To me, if it's supposed to be a military a field watch, I'm gonna use like a double lock, you know, what you find on a dive watch or Rolex a Mariner or something along that line. I'm not going to use a dual deployment, you know, the, the twin trigger. 
So I find that kind of interesting. The other issue I have with the bracelet is that it uses tiny little screw pins for adjustment. You might notice that I'm running the watch on leather. That's because the tiny screw pins, I can't get enough of a purchase on the heads of the screws with my screwdrivers at least that I've been able to remove them. I don't want to strip anything out, so I'm going to run it by my jeweler. I just have not had a chance to do that. So down the road, I'm going to get the bracelet adjusted. I don't understand why they're so small and also why they are so tightly screwed into the bracelet itself. So just kind of a weird thing as far as that goes. So let's wrap it up. Overall, I think this watch has a bit of an identity crisis in that it is marketed as a military and field watch. To me, it's not really, especially on the five link bracelet with a dual deployment clasp, you know, bright shiny bracelet and a lot of polishing on the head of the watch itself. To me, military field watch is, you know, your classic Hamilton field khaki, definitely not this watch. This is more just a modern steel sports watch with maybe a little bit of a military and field watch vibe. Overall, I think the watch is a really good buy for the money though, especially if you like the style. 316 stainless, sapphire crystal AR coating and a fantastic ETA 2824-2 movement. You can grab these on eBay right now for about 300 bucks. So that's US dollars. So a really good buy for the money. All right, everybody, that is it for this episode. Thank you for stopping by and checking us out today. If you have any questions or anything, definitely feel free to hit me in the comments. I will answer back. Otherwise, we will see you soon. And remember to hit over here and over here. You can watch more videos and subscribe over here if you're not already. Definitely appreciate having you guys back.